About a year ago, Samsung launched their 990 Pro Gen 4 NVMe SSD, but only in one and two terabyte capacities. And now they finally released a four terabyte version as well. So I thought this would be a great moment to test this new capacity, but also to revisit the 990 Pro in general because a lot has happened since it was launched. So let's see how it holds up. Uh, let's touch up on some of the issues that Samsung had to deal with in the past year. And let's see if it's still worth getting or not. Let's begin. Just like with the smaller capacity, Samsung will be selling this 4TB model either with or without a heatsink, and I have the non-heatsink version right here. It does come with a very thin heat spreader on top, but do remember that some form of a proper heatsink is always recommended with fast drives like this one. But the really interesting thing here is that the drive is entirely single-sided. Now, most 4TB NVMe SSDs have components on both sides, while this one has everything on top. And that is very important for some laptops, for example, that don't fit dual-sided drives. And it also makes it easier to combine it with motherboard and some third-party heatsinks as well. Looking at the specs, uh, not much has changed. Uh, it still has everything that we expected a high-end SSD should have. So it is a Gen 4x4 NVMe SSD. It has DRAM cache. It uses SLC caching. There is a five-year long warranty and Samsung continues to have extensive support for hardware encryption, which is a very nice bonus. The 4TB version does have some advantages over the smaller capacities. It has larger DRM cache, for example, and its SLC buffer is also much larger. It goes up to 442 gigabytes, assuming you have a lot of empty space on your drive. Just like before, Samsung doesn't disclose details about their controller or exact memory specs because they are one of the manufacturers that actually make all of the parts themselves. So the controller and the memory are Samsung designed and Samsung built, but they do make it clear that this uses TLC memory, not QLC. But let's look at that performance. And as always, I'm going to start with the PC Mark 10 Quick Benchmark. And for those of you that don't know it yet, it is a collection of tests that replicate uh, all those little things we do with our PCs every single day. So things like working with documents, uh, opening photos, uh, loading games, and so on. And this is a very useful benchmark for anyone that is looking for a secondary drive or an extra SSD for those simple little tasks. The 990 Pro was already the fastest Gen 4 drive in the list, with the 1 and 2 terabyte models performing basically the same. But the 4 terabyte version actually manages to perform a bit better than both. Though, it did end up behind the Gen 5 SSDs, which all score higher in this test. But let's look at the more intense uh, full PC Mark 10 suite uh, that imitates a more serious and more intense and more constant use of your system. And this is a great benchmark for anyone that is looking for a new main drive or for anyone that needs to run uh, some applications that can be very heavy on the SSD. The 4TB 990 Pro managed to outperform the smaller capacities and every other Gen 4 drive I've tested so far, but the Gen 5 drives did remain nicely ahead in this test. And the result is very similar if we look at latency. The 4TB version of the 990 Pro is faster than the smaller 990 Pros, as well as other Gen 4 SSDs, but it did remain behind Gen 5 drives. Now, the consistency test isn't that relevant for a lot of you because it simulates an extreme multi-hour workload that most users don't really do. Uh, but for a high-end drive especially, it is very good to see how it holds up when really stressed uh, basically to its limits for a very long period of time. And this is where the 990 Pro continues to shine. Many SSDs, uh, even some Gen 5 drives, really start dropping when stressed in this way but the 990 Pro held up very well. The 2TB version did that last year, but the 4TB version does it even better now, ending up in second place, just a bit behind the Gen 5 T700 drive. Again, this doesn't matter for most of you, but for anyone that has some niche use cases that cause these uh, extreme SSD workloads, this drive is the one to go for, because if you do need it for this, uh, you will very much so appreciate its higher capacity. 
Now, the 3D Mark storage benchmark includes a lot of gaming related tasks. So things like loading games, installing games, recording gameplay, and just moving games around. And this is a very nicely balanced test to look at if you're going to use this drive mainly for gaming. And here, the four terabyte model dropped quite a bit in the ranking uh, for some reason. We retested both capacities a couple of times and the result was always the same. It still does well, but it did drop below the Transcend 250, for example, which generally costs less. But let's check out the sequential read and write performance. Now, those values don't fully really represent real life use as well as previous tests, but it is still good to see if the drive manages to get to speeds that are claimed in their spec sheet. And in sequential writes, the 4 terabyte 990 Pro ends up being the fastest Gen 4 drive yet again, although the entire top part of the graph is basically running into the limits of the Gen 4 slot, with only Gen 5 SSDs managing to get past that 7 gigabyte barrier. And if we look at the sequential reads, it is pretty much the same story. It isn't at the top, but the entire top part is basically bottlenecked by the Gen 4 slot, so between all those drives, it doesn't really matter. They're all the same. Samsung's own specs say that the drive should ideally operate between zero and 70 degrees, but without a heatsink, uh, this SSD can definitely get much hotter than that. When stressed, within minutes, the outside temperature was around 80 degrees, but uh, one of the internal sensors reported almost 100 degrees. So at that point, it did start throttling and slowing down. So a heatsink, is an absolute must for this drive, just as it has been with every other fast Gen 4 SSD I've tested so far. If you have a motherboard with a heatsink, it will be completely enough, but if your motherboard doesn't have one for some reason, uh, you can just grab the heatsink version from Samsung. And if that one is not available in your region or it costs much more than the non-heatsink model, you can just grab a third-party heatsink from Amazon, for example. It will only cost you about $10 or 10 euros and it will be completely enough for this drive. Uh, I will leave a few suggestions and a few links in the description of this video. So if you're interested, you can go ahead and check those out. Another strong feature of Samsung is their Magician software, and it is one of the few software packages that actually feels like a proper modern application. It lets you check the drive's health, uh, sort features like uh, data migration and setting up hardware encryption, but it also regularly reminds you to install firmware updates, and Samsung constantly pushes updates that do increase performance and stability over time. Which doesn't mean that it was all smooth sailing for Samsung and their software. Uh, a few months after the launch of the 1 and 2 terabyte versions of the 990 Pro, some people started reporting rapid drops of their drive's health, uh, even with very little use of the actual drive. And it took Samsung a good few weeks to just respond to that issue. And when they did, I would say their statement wasn't that great, in my opinion. Uh, they acknowledged the problem and they just released a firmware fix uh, that prevents this issue from happening again, which is great for people that plan to buy this drive. But I would say it did nothing to help people that uh, already got reduced drive health ratings. And I tried asking a couple of times what they were planning to do with that, but I got no answer in return. And keep in mind, all they had to do was release a much clearer statement that would explain what happened and how are they fixing it, uh, which would help them regain a bit of trust that was lost with this issue. And I do think that offering the first wave of buyers something like an extra year warranty, for example, uh, just to prove their confidence in their own product, would have been a very simple but a very effective bonus. And considering the fact that SSD failures are very unlikely nowadays, that would have cost them very little and it would have made them look like the good guy. Anyway, I personally uh, haven't had any problems with my drives and I use uh, several two terabyte models in my main PC. And I do think that it is very likely that this is an issue with health reporting in the software rather than SSDs actually getting degraded. But I still cannot ignore this situation and I think Samsung needs to hear this so they can improve the way they respond to possible issues in the future because issues do happen. It is completely normal, but how you handle the issue is what counts in the end. Now, Samsung SSDs usually launch with very 
very high price tags and it takes quite a bit of time for the prices to come down to, uh, let's say, reasonable levels, but that isn't the case with this drive. I haven't seen any listings in the US, but here in the Netherlands, uh, you can pre-order this 4 terabyte model for 309 euros today. Now, that is the same price as the SN850X or MP600 Pro, and it is cheaper than the KC3000 or the Fury Renegade. Now, technically, you can get some 4 terabyte drives for 200 euros or less, but those are budget QLC drives that cannot really compete with this high-end TLC drive. Now, Transcend's uh, 250 series uh, remains a good TLC option for a slightly better price, but Samsung is not that much more while performing better, especially when we look at the more intense workloads. Now, the only drive that does better in those intense workloads is the Gen 5 Crucial T700, but as you can see here, that one will cost you more than twice as much. And considering that uh, most workloads don't really benefit from a Gen 5 drive, or at least not yet, I would personally take two 4 terabyte 990 Pros instead of one T700. So I think the 4TB 990 Pro is in a really good spot at the moment, uh, assuming the price will be as competitive in other regions as it is here in the Netherlands. I would say if you're looking for a high-end, high-capacity drive or you need a proper workstation drive, it does look like the best option available right now. This video is brought to you by Seasonic and their brand new Vertex power supplies. These fully modular power supplies are extremely efficient and very quiet due to their fan design and their hybrid fan mode that stops the fans completely under 40% load. They come with a variety of connections for any kind of systems you have in mind, including the new 12 volt high power cable for the latest RTX graphics cards. And as a little bonus, you get a cozy 10 year long warranty. Check them out using the links in the description below. Thank you all for watching this video and I really hope you enjoyed this update. Uh, do let me know in the comments down below what do you make of these results and what do you think of Samsung in general. I'm really curious to know what you guys think. That is all for now. Bye guys and I will see you in the next one. Bye!